Gag reflex is an important cranial nerve reflex. In this video, I am going to tell you what is gag reflex, its pathway and its clinical significance. Hey everyone, welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. Make sure that you subscribe our channel. So we are back with the another video on the reflexes and that is on the cranial nerve reflex which is a gag reflex today so we have already done a video on that what is reflex what is pupillary light reflex and the corneal and the conjunctival reflexes so if you haven't watched those video i will mention the link of those videos in the description box go and watch them so today we are focusing on gag reflex and as we already know that uh, the video on reflexes are, is basically following that uh, uh, following a pattern which is first we first define what is a reflex and then we talk about what are the components of its reflex arc we are talking about its pathway and then ultimately what is the clinical significance of that reflex what by checking that reflex what are the things which we can know clinically so first we define the reflex this gag reflex which is a cranial nerve reflex it is also called as a pharyngeal reflex so this is a reflex in which you can see like when we define reflex we always start by like what is the stimulus and what is the response we are getting so this is a kind of an involuntary because we already know that reflex is basically an involuntary response to a to a particular or to a educatory stimulus so uh, here the stimulus is a touch uh, the area on which the touch is there is a posterior pharyngeal wall or the tonsillar area or the base of the tongue that is leading to the pharyngeal muscle contraction the response is the contraction of the pharynx uh, and elevation of a soft palate and that gives you a feeling of a gagging or a urge to vomit so this kind of a reflex like if i give my example i feel a lot when i'm having a sore throat so in that case what is happening that there is a contraction of my throat which is trying to pull out that uh, mucus outside the throat okay and it is preventing me uh, preventing the swallowing of the foreign objects inside the th uh, inside the body as well as it is preventing the choking so you you might have also experienced this kind of reflex whenever you are like if you are so if you are trying to swallow some bitter pills or something which is like very large so uh a larger thing a larger uh, a larger thing uh, what we do is first we do chewing that is breaking that uh, larger substance or larger uh, larger piece into the smaller pieces so that we can swallow them so if a larger piece is also there that can also trigger this reflex which is leading to a urge to vomit or even a vomit so just like other reflexes here also we're going to talk about the stimulus which is a touch on the posterior pharyngeal wall tonsillal pillars or the base of the tongue the response is gagging which is you can say asymmetric contraction of the muscles of the uh, pharyngeal uh, of the pharynx and as well as there is elevation of the soft palate that is the definition of gagging and what are the components of a reflex arc the receptors the mechanoreceptors are there because you know you know the, the stimulus is actually touched the receptor must be the mechanoreceptors the effectors you know that there is contraction of the posterior pharyngeal muscle and the elevation of soft palate so the posterior pharyngeal muscle and the soft palate these are the effectors the efferent is the one which is taking the sensations the uh, from all these areas the posterior pharyngeal wall tonsillar pillars or base of the tongue the sensation is being taken up by the glossopharyngeal nerve so uh, this is the efferent the efferent is a vagus nerve which is innervating the muscles of the posterior pharynx and the soft palate okay and here uh, the center this is a, that is the colossal phalangeal is actually going to the medulla and uh, uh, so the, uh, the synapses are being there in the center that is uh, the medulla the central nervous system component and the nuclei are the superior ganglion which is actually lying outside the central nervous system the nuclei which are being there in the medulla are the nucleus tractor solitarius and nucleus ambiguens so nucleus tractor solitarius nts you know is a gustatory nucleus is a is a nucleus of glossophalangeal nerve and nucleus ambiguens is a motor nucleus of a vagus nerve so uh, from here uh, the glossophalangeal is go, uh, is actually giving its input to nucleus tractor solitarius and then from there the inputs are going to nucleus ambiguens 
from there the efferent nerve which is a vagus nerve is going to be arise so this is overall what is this reflex what is the stimulus what is efferent what is efferent and the other components of this reflex now uh, we can switch on to understand the next reflex uh, sorry the next part which is the pathway of this reflex so the pathway of the uh, gag reflex as we already know that uh, uh, that there is a efferent center and the efferent so you can see here that the stimulus of the uh, posterior phalangeal wall or on the base of the tongue or on the tonsillar area is going to be taken by the uh, glossophalangeal nerve which is a ninth cranial nerve and it is passing through the superior ganglion which is uh, in the jugular foramen and then it is entering in the medulla so this is a level of a medulla and here uh, this efferent this orange color that is the glossophalangeal nerve is actually going to the nucleus of tractus solitarius so nts is the nucleus of the glossophalangeal and it is going to synapse there now from here the another neuron will start and it will go to the ipsilateral uh, nucleus ambiguance that is if we are stimulating the left side uh, uh, left side glossophalangeal uh, left side glossophalangeal nerve by stimulating the phalangeal wall or base of the tongue on the left side it is going to be taken by the left glo uh, glossophalangeal nerve to the left nucleus tractus solitarius and then from here it will go to the left nucleus tractus solitarius from where the left vagus nerve will arise which is a 10th cranial nerve it is going to arise it is going to innervate the posterior phalangeal muscles as well as the soft palate so this is going to bring the response which is called as the direct gag reflex okay so direct gag reflex is something that you are stimulating the uh, 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 ipsilateral side and you are getting the response on the same side only now from this here one more projection that is from the nucleus tractus solitarius one neuron is also going to the opposite side that is to the contralateral side which is the right side so it is going to the right nucleus ambiguance from there the right vagus nerve is also going to be stimulated and this is going to the right side posterior phalangeal muscles and the soft palate so this is going to bring the consensual or the indirect gag reflex so just like the pupillary light reflex there and the corneal reflexes also conjunctival reflexes also there also direct and indirect reflexes were there and here also the direct and indirect reflexes are there and the basis of how the direct and the indirect reflex is coming is basically that when you are stimulating one side this uh, the inputs are not only going to the same side but it is also going to the opposite side as well so the so the response is also going to come on the opposite side. So this is a definition contraction of the pharyngeal musculature ipsilateral to the site of stimulus is called as a direct gag reflex and then you are having consensual gag reflex or the indirect reflex which is the uh, contraction of the musculature on the contralateral side is known as the consensual gag reflex. There is one more reflex which is here is a soft palate reflex. So soft palate reflex is a reflex of, uh, which is um, uh, which happens when there is the touch on the soft palate and there the efferents uh, there the efferents actually are going to be taken up uh, by the uh, by this trigeminal nerve so the trigeminal nerve is going to take the inputs from the soft palate uh, trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve to its nucleus which is a spinal trigeminal nucleus and from there it can go to the nucleus ambiguance to bring about the same response that is the gagging so gagging can also be checked by uh, stimulating the soft palate and that reflex is called as a soft palatal reflex okay so now we have seen the definition we have seen the reflex arc and also the pathway now we can switch on to understand the clinical significance of this pathway so at this point we have already discussed that this is there to eliminate any unwanted foreign object to enter inside the system and to just go and it is actually creating a force on it so that to propel it outside the push it outside the mouth and it can even lead to the 
vomiting so uh, that is one of the uh, clinical significance another thing which is very interesting to know is that that in infants in initial 3 to 4 months what happens that whenever any solid food or any large food we uh, they try to swallow uh, what happens is that they actually uh, vomit it out so this is because their gag reflex is hypersensitive during the early infancy and because the nucleus tracta solitarius uh whatever food that appears to be very large to the nucleus tractus solitarius is going to be uh, triggering the gag reflex so that is how the baby is going to propel whatever large food or the solid food you are you uh, try to make uh, the baby eat uh, so after 6 to 7 months of the infancy the gag reflex the sensitivity of the gag reflex reduces and the infant try uh, starts to swallow the solid foods so this is very interesting point that how the reflexes their sensitivity changes as we ages so it is also seen that as the age increases the sensitivity of this reflex decreases and another thing which is very important to remember that reflex is although it is an involuntary response it is not like that that it, it can't be modified by the higher higher cortex it can be modified by the higher centers and that is how people who are trained they are not going to uh, elicitate the response even when the adequate stimulus is being applied and we are going to uh, see this in the next slide that what i am meaning what i am meaning with this modifying uh, uh, reflexes so the uh, the clinical significance we know that this is important like whenever we are checking the a uh, reflex arc we are actually checking any reflex we are actually checking the integrity or functional integrity of a reflex arc so uh, first of all we talk about like the same thing which we have all, all already done in the previous videos we talk about efferent efferent that what happens if there is a efferent damage what happens if there is a efferent damage so if there is a unilateral glossophalangeal nerve damage so suppose there is a right side glossophalangeal nerve good damage so because the efferents could not take any inputs you are not going to get any ipsilateral or the contralateral gag reflex both are going to be absent in case of the unilateral nerve damage what happens that if there is a right vagus damage is there when you are uh, uh, right vagus is damaged but you see the efferents are intact so in that case the response will come but because the uni the right vagus nerve is damaged so the right side soft palate and the po right side posterior pharyngeal walls are not going to be contracting but the contralateral side is is definitely going to be contracting so that result in the soft palate elevation because of the contralateral side vagus nerve is intact and the muscles are also intact so there is soft palate elevation but the pull will be there towards the intact side so that is an important finding and this finding is going to be same even when you are stimulating the opposite side that is the side where the vagus nerve is intact and glossophalangeal both are intact so uh, if there is a unilateral vagus nerve damage stimulating on either side will give you the same kind of response uh that is the soft palate elevation will be there and pull toward the intact side and the important thing which is which you can remember is that that uh, if the vagus nerve is damaged unilate uh, one side so there will be absent ipsilateral reflex but there will be present contralateral reflex so then uh, comes if there is a both damage unilateral glossophalangeal as well as vagus nerve damage so if the if we stimulate the affected side there will be absent or reflex at all like ipsilateral as well as contralateral but if we stimulate the intact side you are going to get the ipsilateral gag reflex but there will be absent contralateral gag reflex okay so that is important to remember so we have talked about the efferent and the efferents so now absent gag reflex like it could be sign of like it's not only that when the efferent or efferent is damaged then only the gag reflex is going to be absent if the efferent and efferent is normal and even though the gag reflex is damaged so how could we know that the efferent or the efferent is normal even when the gag even with the reflex is absent so in that case you can do the other clinical test for that particular nerve so you can perform the glossophalangeal taste sensation test to in order to see that whether the glossophalangeal nerve is intact or not and similarly you can perform the other clinical test for the vagus nerve to know that whether the vagus nerve is intact or not if both of them are intact how will you know that so both if both of them intact that means and even after that the reflex is absent that means there could be problem in the 
brain stem so uh, basically but here an interesting thing which is there is that that normal individuals they could also have the absent gag reflex so that kind of under uh, that kind of thing should be there in your mind so how can you rule out that thing because so that can be ruled like by asking the history so if the person is not having any history of any kind of trauma or tumor or a stroke so in that case most probably the absent gag reflex isn't normal finding in that individual but if the person is saying that i'm having excessive tobacco use or smoking because that also suppresses the gag reflex in that case um Again, gag reflex is going to be absent. Cranial nerve damage, which we have already discussed, like in the bulbar palsy. Stroke uh, is the central cause, cause of absent gag reflex tumor. And normal individuals could also have absent gag reflex. So normal thing could be ruled out by testing the other test of the cranial nerves, the other reflexes, as well as you can ask the history that whether the person is having any clinically relevant history. And very important thing, very, very important thing is a brain death. Assess the brain stem function. So we have already discussed about the uh, papillary reflex where the center is the midbrain. Then we have also discussed about the corneal and the conjunctival reflex and we have also today we are also discussing about the uh, gag reflex where the center is medulla so we have almost covered the whole brain stem which is having midbrain pons and medulla so basically uh, reflexes or the cranial of examination is giving us idea that whether the brain stem is functioning normal or not so in order to say that whether the subject or the patient is brain death or not it is important to check the cranial nerve reflexes like the pupillary reflex corneal conjunctival reflex and the gag reflex so these reflexes are important in assessing the brainstem function and in declaring the individual as a brain death because brainstem functions are critical for the individual to remain alive so that is a very important clinical significance then as i said that uh, the hypersense the reflex could be absent or it could be hypersensitive so it could be like this reflex is some kind of reflex which could be triggered even by thinking that something is touching your uh, posterior pharyngeal wall or tongue and that could induce vomiting so that kind of thing is called as a psychogenic so it can be somatogenic where actually something is touching some some stimulus is there and it could be psychogenic where stimulus is not there the person is thinking and triggering the reflex so that is the hypersensitive gag reflex such as due to anxiety due to postnatal drip acid reflex oral stimulation such as some patients which are going through the dental treatments they could also have this hypersensitive gag reflex and again normal individuals could also have the hypersensitive gag reflex which could be triggered when they're eating some large food or like uh, swallowing pills or bananas or potatoes which are the sticky foods which can stick to the wall and can trigger the reflex so now comes the modify wala thing that gag reflex can be modified by the higher centers so that is important because we are seeing the variation in terms of expression of the reflex among the different individuals some individuals can actually make sure that even when the stimulus is there they are not going to gag such as the sword swallowers so sword swallowers they are having like sword is something which is definitely a foreign object they are actually swallowing it so the gag reflex is being suppressed and they are volunteering suppressing it by using their higher cortical stimulation on the uh, lower motor neuron that is your uh, vagus nerve or vagus nerve then uh, they trigger uh, some people can actually trigger vomiting they can actually cause a self-induced vomiting or forced vomiting uh, such as the person who are having the eating disorders so that case what they do they touch the area the posterior pharyngeal wall or the tongue to induce like first there will be induction of the gagging and then they will be vomiting so this is uh, this is like something very interesting that it could be like no reflex at all and it could be a hypersensitive sensitive reflex it could be physiologically present it could be like pathologically also so at that time the interaction with the patient the history and the other evaluations become very important so uh, we, here we can understand that gag reflex is the phalangeal reflex and uh, this is something which is actually trying to prevent the choking and apart from this the gag reflex apart from the gag reflex another reflex is also there such as cuff reflex 
reflex and the swallowing reflex so this becomes very interesting to understand that what is the relation between these reflexes and how they are like operating together in order to make sure in order to like be uh, uh, giving a protective response uh, exactly so uh, in the coming video we will discuss about the swallowing reflex we will discuss about the cuff reflex and we try to associate or like relate with it them uh, uh, relate them with the gag reflex in order to have a holistic understanding so with this we are at the end of this video if uh, and uh, if you like this video please like sh like share and subscribe our channel this is a reference from where most of the content is being taken this is a very good article you can go and refer it and yeah thanks for watching again if you like this video please like share and subscribe our channel and do let me know in the comment section any kind of topic you want me to make a video on it thank you and keep learning